This is the all new Night Trucks 5.0 and with this one update, they just killed everything you knew about this distro. They replaced its flagship NX desktop with Hyperland. They are introducing a new app ecosystem, a new immutable core, and they are also introducing a really interesting dual kernel strategy. This is the redefining moment for Night Trucks Linux. The developers have envisioned the race car of Linux distros. But not everything is good in Night Trucks land, nope. I feel that this update, the changes they have done can potentially end up alienating a good chunk of Nitrux users. I've been playing around with Nitrux 5.0 for a few days now and this distro has shocked me in good ways and in brutally bad ways. And in this video, I'm laying down everything out for you. Let's jump right in. The biggest change here and honestly the most controversial one is the desktop. Nitrux was famous for its NS desktop. It was built on KDE Plasma and it was widely considered one of the most beautiful Linux distributions out there. It was familiar, it was polished and it was easy to use. But in Nitrux 5.0, that legacy is gone, completely deleted. Nitrux has replaced the entire Plasma stack with Hyperland. Now Hyperland is a dynamic tiling Wayland compositor and visually it looks super clean and incredibly snappy. We get Waybar handling the top panel, Crystal Dock for launching applications and WoFi as the application launcher. Everything feels butter smooth because this stack is lightweight and built specifically for Wayland. But, and this is a massive but, this changes everything about how you use your computer. This is a completely new way of using computers and we are moving away from the familiar and intuitive way of interacting with our computer with the mouse. Here, we get a tiling workflow where windows automatically snap in non-overlapping tiles. This is a keyboard-centric power user interface. The mouse is secondary here. You have keyboard shortcuts or hotkeys for everything. As I said, this is a completely different way of using a computer. You have to learn all the hotkeys and basically you have to get a PhD in Hyperland. Let me give you a quick taste of what I mean. Want to open the app launcher? Super plus R. Yeah, Super plus R. They could have gone with Super or Super plus space, but they wanted Super plus R because that just comes to everybody intuitively, right? Need to switch between workspaces? Super plus number keys from 1 to 0 for workspaces 1 through 10. Moving focus between windows? Super plus arrow keys. Close the window? Super plus C. Launch a terminal? Super plus Q. Open your file manager? Super plus E. The main things that you need to remember is Super plus R to open the O5 menu and Super plus C to close windows. And that's just scratching the surface. You have shortcuts for full screen, floating windows, styling directions, screenshots, clipboard history and pretty much everything else. If you hold Super and drag with your left mouse button, you can move windows around. Hold Super and drag with right button, you resize them. This is your new reality on Hyperland. Every single action has a keyboard shortcut and you need to memorize them to be productive here. Omachi, which is yet another Hyperland focused distro, has a neat keyboard shortcut that when pressed shows all the key bindings for the system and it makes a big difference in how fast you get adjusted or learn using that system. Nitrux doesn't have this feature and it really hurts the adoption of the system. So is it beautiful? Absolutely. Is it fast? Turbocharged. But if you want a cozy, familiar and intuitive use, let's face it. This is not it. Absolutely not it. I have spent decades in the Linux world and while I have seen my fair share of plot twists, I have not seen anything like this. I mean in one move, Nitrux completely alienated 90% of its user base. And the thing is, Nitrux developers are completely aware of the consequences of this action. But it seems they have a very different vision for the future of Nitrux and they are okay shedding user base but I still can't wrap my head around this decision. I mean, its older NX desktop was really good, smooth as butter. If the desktop change was bold, what they've done with the kernel is straight up insane. The developers have explicitly stated that Nitrux 5.0 is a track weapon, not a city commuter, and just like a race car, you don't put regular engine in it. Nitrux 5.0 doesn't ship with a single one-size-fits-all kernel anymore. Instead, we get two distinct turbocharged ISO variants geared for specific hardware. First, we have the Liquorix kernel edition running kernel 6.17.7. This is optimized for AMD and Intel graphics using the Mesa 25 stack. It uses Zen interactive tuning and a 1000Hz stick rate, making the system feel absolutely super smooth. If you want low latency, this is the sweet spot. On the other hand, we have the Cache OS Kernel Edition, and this is a game changer for NVIDIA users. It comes with NVIDIA OpenGPU kernel modules by default. 
For years, NVIDIA on Wayland was a nightmare, but this specific tuning makes it viable, fast, and frankly, mind-blowing. The Cache OS variant also includes an experimental SCX CPU scheduler for better task scheduling and Anansi CPP, a daemon that automatically tweaks process priorities to keep everything feeling smooth under heavy load. Now here's a critical warning. If you have an AMD GPU, do not use the Cache OS ISO. For some reason, the Cache OS kernel fails to launch the Hyperland GUI on AMD graphics card. You'll get a black screen. AMD and Intel users must use the Liquorix edition. The practical benefit of this split is insane. You are no longer compromising raw performance for general compatibility. Instead, you get a fully turbocharged system that is perfectly tailored, delivering either a butter smooth low latency experience for AMD and Intel or a game changer configuration for Nvidia that just works out of the box. For gamers, Nitrux also ships with GameScope, Valve's microcompositor that optimizes gaming performance on Valen. And here's the kicker. Virtual machine support is dead. They have stripped out Hyper-V, VirtualBox, and VMware drivers to streamline the code. They're focusing exclusively on bare metal performance. So yeah, if you're planning to run this as a virtual machine, you might be out of luck. Now, Nitrux has been a systemd free distro for years. They ditched systemd way back in 2020 and they have been running OpenRC ever since. But with Nitrux 5.0, they have taken that foundation and refined it even further. In a world where almost every major distro, Ubuntu, Fedora, Debian, rely on systemd, Nitrux stands apart. And in version 5.0, they are upgraded to OpenRC 0.63 and completely overhauled the service layer. Here's what makes this significant. Think of the operating system like an orchestra. Systemd is that conductor who is trying to play the violin, the drums and the trumpet all at once while conducting. It does everything, it's very good at it and in my honest opinion, it is the future. But it's heavy. OpenRC is different. OpenRC is the minimalist conductor who steps up, gives a clear beat and gets out of the way. It's precise, it's predictable and it is fast. But remember, none of the major distros use this. What's new in Nitrux 5.0 is that they have replaced all those old sys5 style service scripts with native OpenRC implementations. This makes boot times faster and service management more predictable. Everything feels very nimble. And this refined OpenRC setup is crucial for system's new architecture. It provides the lean, stable foundation needed for the NX overlaid root, that's the immutable file system, and the nuts update tool to work the magic. It might have a learning curve if you're used to the system control commands, but for distro focused on pure speed and architectural integrity, this refined OpenRC foundation is absolutely right. By the way, if you haven't already, check out my course Linux Mastery Express. I've designed this course to level up your Linux skills very quickly. With this course, you'll get so comfortable using the terminal commands that your friends will think you're a Linux wizard. You'll get perfect with the most used, most useful commands and also learn advanced things like using the vEditor and shell scripting as well. Linux Mastery Express, link in the description, do check it out. Alright, let's talk about one of the most fundamental changes in Nitrux 5.0, the immutable core file system. Let me quickly explain. In traditional Linux distributions, you can modify, delete or break pretty much any system file. You have that freedom, but with that freedom comes risk. One wrong command and you could completely destroy your operating system. Nitrux 5.0 takes a completely different approach. The root file system here is read only by default. This is managed by NX overlay root, which is a custom fork of Ubuntu's overlay root tool. What this means in practice is that your core operating system is locked down. You cannot accidentally delete system files. You cannot break the base system. It's bulletproof. Think of it like this. The operating system itself is permanently stored in a bulletproof glass case. You can see it, it functions perfectly, but you cannot scratch, change or break its internal machinery. This is a new kind of paradigm in Linux distros. Fedora Silverblue and Fedora Keonite are a couple of other famous immutable distros. Now you might be wondering, if the system is read-only, how do you install applications, how do you update it? That's where the Nitrux Update Tool System or NUTS comes in. Yeah, great acronym. NUTS provides atomic updates. This means an update is either fully applied or not applied at all. You will never be left with a broken, half-updated system. NUTS also gives you easy rollbacks and system snapshots. If an update breaks something, you can revert to a previous known good state in minutes. Now one thing that hasn't changed is Nitrux's foundation. 
Despite all these radical changes, Nitrux 5.0 is still based on Debian Unstable also known as SID. This gives Nitrux access to cutting edge packages while the developers curate and filter through their own immutable layer. This immutable architecture is rock solid and gives you peace of mind with updates, but it does require a shift in mindset if you're used to traditional mutable Linux systems, that's for sure. Now let's talk about how you actually install software on Nitrux 5.0. Because of the immutable file system we just discussed, traditional package managers simply cannot work here. So apt is completely gone. So how do you install applications? Enter the NX App Hub system. NX App Hub is a brand new in-house package management system built specifically for Nitrux. It uses a command line client and a background daemon. When you install an application, the CLI tool reads a YAML recipe from a Git-based repository, builds an app box from curated sources and installs it in your home directory, which of course is not working as intended here. Now what's an app box? It's Nitrux's own successor to app images. App boxes are portable applications that use Fuse 3 file system for mounting. They are faster, smaller and better integrated than the old app images. The thing is, NX App Hub treats these app boxes like traditional packages. You get that package manager experience without actually modifying the base system. As I said, they are installed in your home directory. And Nitrux still ships with its signature MAUI apps. These are custom applications built with MAUI Kit, a cross-platform UI framework. We get Index as the file manager, Nota for text editing, Viewer for music and Pix for images. These apps have been updated to version 4.0.2 and they give Nitrux that unique look. But I don't really care for these default apps. While they are unique and feel different, they do feel very unpolished and yeah, there are rough edges here and there and you feel it. But what if you need software that's not in the NX app hub? That's where Flatpak and Distrobox come in. Flatpak is supported out of the box. You can install sandbox applications directly from Flathub without any hassle. With this, basically the entire Linux app ecosystem opens up for you. You can install anything and everything you could ever need on Nitrux. Distrobox is even more powerful. It lets you run containerized distributions like Ubuntu or Arch inside Nitrux. Need to use apt? Just spin up a Ubuntu container in Distrobox and use apt all you want, safely isolated from your immutable base system. This new app ecosystem is radically different from what most Linux users are used to. It's curated, controlled and designed for stability. Yeah. Overall, I did think that this was a bit complicated compared to traditional package management on most other distros, but it aims to give you flexibility when you need it. Now we need to talk about the elephant in the room and I'm not going to sugarcoat this. If you're currently running an older version of Nitrux like 3.9.1 or anything before that and you want to upgrade to Nitrux 5.0, there is no upgrade bug. None. You just cannot update your system and get Nitrux 5.0. You have to wipe everything and do a fresh installation. Nitrux uses the Calamaris installer which has been updated to version 3.3.14 for this release. Let me be absolutely clear here, this is not optional, this is not a recommendation, this is the only way to get Nitrux 5.0 if you are in an older version. And the reason for this is simple. The architectural change in Nitrux 5.0 is so massive that an in-place upgrade is simply not possible. We are talking about a complete replacement of the desktop environment, a total OR of the init system, a new immutable file system and a completely different application management system. This is a full reboot of the distribution and that requires a fresh start. Now I get it, this is a deal breaker for many existing Nitrux users. Wiping your system, backing up all your data, reinstalling from scratch and reconfiguring everything is a massive pain. It's time consuming, but because of the major update, it is the only way as of now. But there is one crucial question you have to ask yourself before updating. Do you really want to update to or install Nitrux 5.0? I've been testing Nitrux 5.0 for 3 days now and honestly, I cannot recommend this release, not yet at least. Let me be very clear here, the vision behind Nitrux 5.0 is brilliant. On paper, this is exactly what a high performance Linux distribution should look like. Immutable file system, atomic updates, dual kernel strategy, Wayland only hyperland desktop, technically this all sounds fantastic. But the execution, it's just not there. Let me give you some concrete examples. I couldn't connect to Wi-Fi using the GUI. The network menu in the top bar simply didn't give me the option to connect. I had to drop into the terminal and configure everything manually. This is 2025. Basic Wi-Fi connectivity should not require terminal commands. And the keyboard shortcuts. Super plus R to open the app launcher is a terrible choice. Every other system just uses the super key or super plus space. And here's a kicker. 
If you press super plus R multiple times, multiple instances of the O5 open up and you have to mash escape repeatedly to close them. Sometimes they just get stuck. The installation experience was absolutely terrible. And if I left my computer alone for a few minutes and it locked itself, there were times when it absolutely failed to lock back in. I had to do a hard restart. I've been using Omachi a lot, which is another Hyperland focused distribution and the difference is night and day. Omachi feels polished, it feels premium, things just work. You can feel the quality and attention to detail in every interaction. Nitrux 5.0 feels rough around the edges in comparison. I also tried using the NX App Hub CLI to install applications. It didn't work properly for me. I understand it's a new system and not as mature as App or DNF, but if you're removing traditional package managers entirely, your replacement needs to be rock solid from day one. So I stuck with Flatmax. Though the overall feel of the system is that everything is unnecessarily complicated. Simple tasks that should take seconds end up taking minutes of troubleshooting. And I get that Hyperland has a learning curve. I understand that this is a different workflow, but even accounting for that, Nitrox 5.0 feels unfinished. Do the developers have a great vision? Absolutely. Is the technical foundation solid? Yes. But does this system feel like a polished, usable track weapon? Not even close. There's potential here. If the developers spend the next few releases polishing the experience, fixing the rough edges and making basic tasks actually work, Nitrox could become something special. But right now, this is a beta release masquerading as stable 5.0. I cannot recommend Nitrox 5.0 to anyone at this stage. Not to power users, not to enthusiasts, not even to distroppers looking for something different. The blueprint is there, but the house isn't built yet. Alright, if you found this video useful, if you enjoyed it, definitely consider subscribing to the channel and also give me a big thumbs up. And if you're interested in leveling up your Linux skills, the link to my course Linux Mastery Express is given in the description below. It's designed to teach you Linux and take you from zero to hero in the shortest time possible. You'll be using Linux like a pro within a matter of hours, so definitely check that out. Next up, check out my video of the top ways to supercharge your Linux desktop's performance to the next level and truly unlock your system. It's got some really cool tweaks, so definitely don't miss that. Alright, this is Linux Tech signing out.